All right, listen up, everybody. Move it along. Move it along, all right? Art police. Back to tell you what you can and can't draw according to art law. Are, are you drawing fan art over there? Shut it down. Wrap it up. It's illegal. No, there is nothing wrong with fan art, and the only thing drawing should be is fun. This video isn't about what you should and shouldn't do, it's really more about an idea. Now, you may have seen a recent trend of folks doing six fan arts from people's suggestions, and I did something a little different. There are dangers inherent to making fan art that we've talked about plenty of times before. The fan art trap, as I call it, involves making something purely because it's popular, getting those popularity points, continuing to make fan art not because you want to, but because you feel like you're supposed to 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 a point where you're so far diverged from something else that you wanted to make in the first place and when you do finally return to that you get crickets because the people who liked your fan art liked it because they're fans of the thing and not so much fans of your original work we've, we've covered that today i want to talk about making fan art that makes an impact not policing what you choose to make just giving you a suggestion that i've had a lot of fun with as artists we like it when there is a response to our work so question for you will george lucas care if you make a drawing of Darth Vader? Probably not. Even if it was, like, incredibly good? Probably not. What is even the likelihood that he will see it? Next to none, because there is a 40-year saturation of basically any and all Star Wars art. Not saying that you shouldn't, not saying that you can't, not saying if you'd have fun doing it, don't. It's just saturated. Now, on the flip side, think of artists like yourself who might have less than 200,000 followers, 50,000 followers, 100 even, independent artists that have their own original characters and content, how much more likely are they to see fan art that you make, and how much more is it going to mean to them? And if you've ever been on the receiving end of fan art, or art of your character, it means a great deal. So that's what I set out to do, and wow, has it been a lot of fun to do. I've learned a lot through it, so let me share this process with you. Very, very quickly, not only is there a new Biko's backpack for May called Hope and Fluff over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen, this coming weekend it's the main event, the virtual booth streaming on twitch.tv slash bageldenizen. Surprises, new videos, a sale, you don't want to miss it. Short story is, a Comic-Con booth that I had for that weekend is now cancelled, so I'm bringing that experience to you. So all of the characters that you'll see me drawing in this video are original characters from other independent creators whose designs I just really like. There's something about them that really resonated with me and made me want to draw these characters. The first one here is this little goblin character from John Lauren, who is an incredible visual storyteller. He's someone who has really helped me understand the idea of clarity first when it comes to storytelling. Uh, even the things that are important, like you know, rendering and the, the correctness of a form in something kind of goes by the wayside if it doesn't help tell the story on display. So this little goblin character of John's, there isn't a ton of story to go off of, but what is there is very clear. Uh, this little goblin always has this pitchfork with a sausage on it, which leads me to believe, and I took some liberties with this drawing, that he is a breakfast-loving gobbo. Now when it comes to making fan art yourself, a little word of caution here, and maybe this goes without saying, um, <laughs> but I would prefer that you be a, a good person. And, and what I mean by that is it's imperative that you're doing this for the right reasons. And are there right and wrong reasons when it just comes to fun fan art? Well, a right reason would be because you really like the character, uh, you like the creator, you want to do something nice for them. A bad reason would be trying to leverage their attention, their audience, basically the, the same thing that you would with any other kind of fan art, but it's a lot more personal in this case. So just don't be scummy. Making fan art of other creators' work is a great way to build a sense of community. It's a great way to learn something about the way that person makes art by studying and replicating their work. And it's also a fun way to figure out what are you bringing to the table artistically or style-wise. I think it's interesting sometimes I'll try to really consciously put my own spin on something, sort of like an out-of-body third-party, how would Brooks draw this, what's Brooks's style? And I find that that never really comes out as good as when I just draw it without trying to make any big changes, and inevitably it will look like you drew it, unless you're just tracing. Now, this next character is Duncan. Duncan is from a story called Jellybots, which you might recognize as the project of our good buddy Nicholas Cole. This world and story that Nick has built is a really interesting and unique one where this sort of biomechanical essence called jelly takes the form of not only other objects, but things like thoughts and feelings. 
And this character, Duncan, is this very proficient sort of uh, senior student. And so his use of his own personal jelly is very advanced and sophisticated. I'll give you a quick Nick story. Nick, you'll remember we did an interview with him last year, uh, and there's a little clip of him in that light box video as well. Amazing person. He's, he's been so helpful with me and my own art and journey and everything over the last few years. Incredible dude. Um, just a, a quick story with him that Lightbox clip that's there, you know, Lightbox was this incredible three-day event, uh, and I don't think that Nick was ever without someone coming up to him, swarming him, something, you know, connecting, interfacing, and as extroverted as he is, I'm sure that it was an overload at some point, and if not that, his voice was hoarse and failing him at that point. And, you know, the show is wrapping up, and I still was hoping to get this clip with him. He was doing interviews with like Australian television and stuff. And I said, Nick, you seem like a wrung out sponge. It's okay. I, I wanted to do a clip, you know, something really quick for the, the YouTube stuff because folks will, will recognize you, but we don't have to. And he was like, let's do it. And he did it. And we pretended he created Peppa Pig. And uh, that's just how, how great a person he is. This piece, more than any of the others, resembles a study more so than fan art, only because what Nick is doing with the Jellybot stuff is so cool, and I don't necessarily have a unique thing that I'm bringing to the table personally as far as a new idea or way of executing things. So it's sort of at best just trying to match what's already there with things that he's made. But making fan art in this way, even as a study, is a really great way to learn something about the way that other artists do things, the way that they solve problems visually, and I think it always informs you about the way that you make things as well. This next character is one that I really love. The artist is AJ Howard. This is Joe the Coffee Bot, and just so much to appreciate in this character's design. The theming and motif of the character, first of all, after a coffee French press is so cool. That antenna on top of his head is actually like the plunger in a French press. And, you know, however high or low that plunger is, is the energy level that the character has. The other cool thing about him, not only does he have this very cool, like, robot butler aesthetic going on, but there's these various modes that AJ's made. So even though it looks like there's two characters here, it's actually two different forms that he progresses through. And I really like, I, I think the connection that most people would make there is something like the, the various designs of, of a Pokemon stage. But I actually kind of, I hope AJ's okay with me saying this, I, I almost liken a little bit more to the classic Sonic versus modern Sonic, because that change in, a, in proportion and everything kind of it, it feels that way too. It, you have the sort of more adventurous and heroic looking version of the character and the more iconic sort of chibi-fied, cutified version too. And I'm really happy with how this one turned out. This character is part of a comic project that AJ is working on. I'm going to be keeping my eye on it. It's got a ton of really cool character designs and I think you should too. Next up we have a character called Snoo by the artist Dina Norland. If you aren't already familiar with some of her YouTube work, she does a ton of visual storytelling and comic work uh, with a lot of focus around a lot of creature stuff and foliage, fauna, flora, and this little mascot character of hers is one that I really like the design of and conveniently merges that fauna and flora vibe pretty well. The design of this character has these little markings on the face that definitely resemble grumpy eyebrows, and so my idea with this was make this little family a mom with two little baby snooze that all look very grumpy at each other. I'm sure the vibe that a lot of people would get from a character like this is something like Bulbasaur. Personally, I hearken back to Pikmin. That's the vibe and influence I kind of draw from, so the adult is going to be more developed and the flora on their back is going to be more advanced and these little babies have these sprigs and leaves are just sort of sort of starting to mature and get their own foliage. I really liked the idea of the leaves on the back of that one that's stretching, kind of arcing back as a, a follow through that you might see on a stretching dog or cat. Last up, I have a character by Cam Kendall called Flopnar the Bunbarian, who's just the most needlessly angry, cute little dude. Um, this sketch on the left actually you might recognize from a, a thumbnail back in November, which should tell you how long it's been that I've been wanting to do a fan art kind of series of illustrations. My workload has been absolutely insane. I was able to take the character on the left here as a starting point 
and then create a new one more recently that I think has a really fun amount of gesture and flow and overall shapes to the character. Cam is an amazing, genuine guy. His work has this awesome quality of whimsy and delight to it, and I think a lot of the stuff that he makes when it's intentionally funny hits that really funny mark. There are a lot more than just six characters from independent creators that I've wanted to work on. This is what I've been able to get through so far. This last little sketch to bring us up to six is uh, Nick's character Lumino, who, how could I not? The yellow, the purple, everything. So great. I've absolutely loved making the fan art that you've seen in this video, so I can't wait to etch out, eke out the tiniest bit of time moving forward to keep doing more. If you want to see the final product of these pieces and the future pieces of fan art that I plan on making, you can follow me on Instagram at Bagel Denizen. And if you aren't already following at twitch.tv slash Bagel Denizen, again, it's, it's, a, it's a huge deal this weekend. I'm really excited about it. I've been prepping for it for a bit. So make sure you're following and have notifications on May 9th and 10th virtual booth. It's going to be fun. Not only is there a glow pup hard enamel pin in the new Vico's backpack entitled Hope and Fluff, but we've also got Jacqueline's little brother, Ramsel, on the front of this month's trading card. You can check out that at patreon.com slash bageldenizen. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating!